It was, Carl, a rare opportunity for CEOs of America's top companies to get the chance to engage and hear directly from President Zelensky, obviously joining us via Zoom in Kyiv, Ukraine. I actually got the chance to start off the conversation. We've been we were taking it on CNBC.com. And of course, good friend of, of, the, of CNBC, Jeff Sonnenfeld, leading this event here at the Yale School of Management. I started the question with President Zelensky in the room of CEOs by asking him what they can do today to help him and his country. Here's how he responded. Companies that are represented in the Russian market should leave uh, uh, if that is possible for them to leave Russia completely. Uh, the most important thing is that they, they, not, they do not only leave Russia, but do not pay taxes to the Russian financial system uh, that, um, that because this money are uh, used to find this Russian war machine that is killing Ukrainians. And every day we do get news of companies trying to exit. Just this morning, Microsoft announcing it's scaling back its operations significantly. The conversation then moved to the war in its 105th day to this man who is leading politically and militarily his country's fight. And a lot of executives were curious as to what comes next. So I asked him about it. Given what you know about the Russian people, Russia, President Putin, what will it take to move them to negotiate or curtail their aggression? We need a powerful Ukraine to do that. We need a powerful Ukraine. A powerful Ukraine is uh, not Ukraine as a state that uh, fights against Russia alone. Uh, which is uh, situating its troops in Ukraine. Powerful Ukraine is a country which is united with the European Union, with every country of the European Union, uh, just not on paper. Now, there are many CEOs of major global companies in the room, executives, mayors. Lloyd Blankfein was there, the former CEO of Goldman Sachs. He asked President Zelensky and push further on this idea of the end game, what happens next, and how we avoid a prolonged bloody stalemate. Here's what President Zelensky said on that. The world is capable of doing it. We have just discussed only one aspect. When businesses are leaving Russia, and there are very many different aspects to it, the sanctions policies, uh, if they are introduced, they are being introduced already. Uh, but um, we need to switch Russia off the global financial system completely uh, to see the real result of sanctions. We cannot uh, settle for piecemeal actions uh, to just to anticipate whether Russia is going to uh, evade sanctions or circumvent them. And one final point that I thought was a powerful statement that President Zelensky made on that answer. He said, we are willing to put an end to it, but not at the price of our independence, and got what was his third or fourth standing ovation from the crowd on that remark. Jane Frazier's there, the CEO of Citigroup. She asked President Zelensky a question about the agriculture situation. Ukraine feeds the world, and of course, a lot of those tons of grains are held up at ports with the Russians blocking the port of Odessa on the Black Sea. Here's what President Zelensky and Frazier said about that. Can you talk a little bit about the harvest and the grain and the food situation? You are one of the great exporters to the world. What can we be doing to help support um, your people um, and the economy in the meantime um, uh, through, the next, uh, through the next few months on that dimension. Thanks, Jay, for the question. Uh, uh, to date, uh, this is probably one of the most challenging uh, tasks that we are facing uh, that is uh, besetting our economy and our exporters. This is just uh, the surface of the problem, the top of the iceberg. If we, if we do not resolve this issue now, it will be not, not just an influx of problems, but a tsunami. Jane Frazier there asking about the, the grain situation. I thought one of the powerful comments he made there was that President Zelensky accused Russia of, quote, food genocide. And then another question came at the end, guys, from Hamdi Olakaya. He's the CEO of Chobani. has done a lot of work on refugee crises across the world, including this one. And he, he said that 
uh, President Zelensky said that he urges business and companies to help our people financially as long as they are outside of Ukraine and that when they return, uh, he will take care of them. Talked a lot about the rebuild and the tremendous efforts that the country has in front of them. Back to you guys.